Today we're going to talk about what ingredients don't play well together or in other words what ingredients not to mix. Hi there, I'm Manuela Marcajani from Isomer's Skin Care, cosmetic chemist and researcher with over 30 years experience in skin care formulation and chemistry. And today I want to talk a little bit about what ingredients uh, should not you should not mix together in your skincare, which means you can probably use them on the same day, but you're not gonna use one after the other. So you can do one in the morning, one at night, and we're gonna go through them and we're gonna explain why. First of all, I'm gonna talk about the retinols. So you have retinol or retinoic acid. Don't mix it with your vitamin C. And when we're talking about vitamin C, we mean L ascorbic acid. If you hear a little bit of squeaking here and there, I've got Tuxedo, my uh, Springer Spaniel Poodle playing with his favorite toy right now. So it's a little bit of squeaking. Can't get him to stop. So as we stop filming, he stops. We start filming, he starts playing again. So we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. So first of all, uh, L-ascorbic acid. Okay, so when we're talking about vitamin C, we're being very specific here. We mean L-ascorbic acid and not, you know, magnesium ascorbic acid or ethylated ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid with retinols or retinoids. Do not mix them together. The reason is these kind of cancel each other out. That's one of the reasons why you don't want to use those together. Retinol with benzyl peroxide. You don't want to use one right after the other because this actually increases irritation and sensitivity. So I would, with, with that case, say you have acne and you want to use benzyl peroxide, use the benzyl peroxide in the daytime, you know, maybe it's your cleanser, maybe it's your cream. And at nighttime, use your retinol without the benzyl peroxide. Okay, so this way you're gonna reduce the irritation and always make sure that you moisturize and hydrate. Another that cancel, uh, don't, you don't wanna work to use together, retinols with AHAs. And specifically the AHA that we mean is the glycolic acid. And again, this is going to increase the sensitivity of your skin, uh, make your skin much more irritated. Same is gonna be true with retinol and salicylic acid. So what are you gonna do if you say, wait, I have enlarged pores and I wanna use retinol because I hear it's very good for your skin, but you also tell me that, you know, BHA is good for my pores. Well, this is what I would do. I would use the BHA in the daytime, I use the retinol at nighttime. What I'm saying is don't layer one over the other. So don't use one as a serum, one as a cream, or don't layer them together because in this case, again, it's about the sensitivity. You don't want to increase the sensitivity on your skin. You want to play well with your skin. If you must, must, must use them together, use them in very, very low dosage and not every single day. Okay, so skip a day. Um, really listen to the barrier of your skin or the reactivity of your skin, what your skin looks like, its condition. And sometimes you can be a little bit more aggressive in summer months. Um, and less aggressive in winter months. So again, just keep this in mind, the things that work well together. So the next two that really don't play well together are going, is going to be uh, L-ascorbic acid, so that's the vitamin C, the L-ascorbic acid version with copper peptides. I love copper peptides. I use copper peptides um, and I can use copper peptides with magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, for example, which is a different version of a vitamin C or ethylated ascorbic, but not with L-ascorbic, okay? So those will cancel each other out. It will not make you more sensitive or increase dryness or vulnerability, but it cancels each other out. So you use one or the other other, but don't use both. Uh, so what I do is I use the copper peptide with a different version uh, of vitamin C, not the L-ascorbic acid, if I have to combine the two together for brightening. And uh, that little ee -ee is uh, Tuxedo's toy in action. Still working after all this time. <laughs> and finally, the last combo that doesn't play well together is L-ascorbic acid and glycolic acid, the AHA. And the reason there is that it's sensitivity. It's, uh, it's gonna increase the vulnerability, increases the dryness, increases the sensitivity. So for the combinations that make you more sensitive, increase sensitivity or increase dryness, if you really want to use the two together, I would say go slow, 
okay? Ideally, you don't use them at the same time. Split them up AM and PM. Rule of thumb, uh, vitamin C is a daytime ingredient. Aliscorbic acid is a daytime ingredient and retinol, retinoic acid are a nighttime ingredient. That really helps break up uh, when you're going to use um, the other product, if, especially if it's going to increase sensitivity or cancel each other out. So think about, you know, your daytime is vitamin C. I always think orange juice, daytime, vitamin C, nighttime, retinols. You wanna stay away from uh, any of that UV irradiation. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about what ingredients don't play well together. I'm gonna go play with Tuxedo now because we play well together. And if you like the video, uh, please like, uh, share, and subscribe to our channel. I look forward to talking to you soon.